Hi there, welcome to our last of our lectures on the larynx. In this particular lecture, I'm going to be covering the areas of the blood supply to the larynx and venous drainage. I'm also going to talk about lymphatic drainage from the larynx. And uh, at the end, I'll talk about the nerves and also some common emergency procedures involved with the larynx. So if we just spin over to um, the slide just here. We'll first of all start talking about the arterial supply. So arterial supply, remember we're coming off the arch of the aorta. So here we have the first rib here. This is the root of the neck. This is my trachea. Uh, this is the larynx here with the thyroid cartilage, the big shield, thyrohyoid membrane, hyobone, and running along is that big vascular structure, which is your carotid artery, okay? Common carotid here. Now remember, Coming off the arch of the aorta, down in the thorax here, you normally get brachycephalic trunk going to the right-hand side, and on the left-hand side, which is where we are here, you've got left common carotid climbing up, and you'll get to a level of about C4 and bifurcate, and then you have external carotid and then internal carotid. Now, the thing to remember about external carotid is the only one which has branches in the neck, and there's external carotid there. Um, external carotid is very interesting because it's as soon as this artery bifurcates, there is one artery that is dying to come off. Okay, and I normally tell the students this. Um, imagine this is a bus, and it's heading up north, which is heading up to your brain and up to your head, and suddenly there's this artery which sees the place where it needs to get to which would be the thyroid, which is sitting about here, and tries to press the bell, but the bus driver doesn't hear it, and it just keeps going. And the minute it gets onto this route here, this is the first available stop, it jumps off. And as it jumps off, it turns, and it starts to head down towards where it, with the stop where it had missed. And this is your superior thyroid, the first branch of your external carotid artery. That's it heading down towards the thyroid. This is the vessel which is going to give us our superior laryngeal artery and that's going to disappear in that hole within the thyrohyoid membrane. So that's the membrane, thyrohyoid membrane. Remember it had that thickening at the front. Got a tiny hole on the side where, where things can disappear through. Okay, so the other vessel that we need to know, that's superior, so if there's superior, there must be an inferior. Well, here we are. Coming off the subclavian, and this is your left subclavian here, climbing up here, off your subclavian, we have this here, thyrocervical trunk. Thyrocervical trunk is going to climb up, and it's thyrocervical, so it's going to do some cervical projections, and then it's going to have inferior thyroid. And it's inferior thyroid, which is heading towards the thyroid here, which is going to give some branches which are going to go to the larynx. So we're supplying larynx from the top and also from the bottom. And look what happens here with um, superior laryngeal artery as he goes through there. It then allows superior thyroid to continue down towards the thyroid. So the superior laryngeal is a branch off the superior thyroid and the inferior laryngeal artery will be a branch of this inferior thyroid artery. So it's the same pattern, just mirror image. Moving on to the venous drainage, remember there are two arteries to supply, but three drains to drain away. So the three drains are the superior thyroid vein, and there's it going there, into the internal jugular. That's on the right, and this is on the left. And then we have the middle laryngeal vein and thyroid vein. And that's heading towards your internal jugular. And then lastly, we've got inferior laryngeal vein and inferior thyroid vein. There he is. And that's going to be heading down and joining on and draining into your left brachiocephalic vein. Brachio, remember, means arm. Cephalic is head, so it's a vein which is connecting, draining your arm and your head. Brachiocephalic. And that's going to drain into your superior vena cava. 
it's going to take a contribution in from your azygous vein before it goes into the right atrium of your heart and then around the clock again it goes so this is your venous drainage two arteries for supply three veins to take away let's move on to the excess this is the excess remember tissue fluid you take about 90% away through your veins about 10% gets left over it goes to the lymph system so what lymphatics do we have draining the larynx well there's two in particular we need to know about um, they, these are well there's mainly your deep cervical lymph nodes okay and they're spread over these areas here deep cervical lymph nodes and you can see those drain the larynx also trachea thyroid parathyroids and posterior to the nasal sinuses your posterior tongue hard and soft palates palatine tonsil and pharynx so that's deep cervical lymph nodes and that's where they're located and look how they hang around the sort of internal jugular system and arterial system the carotids okay lastly I want to talk about the nerves before I move on to our emergencies um, the nerve for the larynx is the, the vagus nerve okay remember the vagus nerve is going to come out through the um, jugular foramen which is that kidney bean shaped hole in the skull is going to go through this inferior ganglion and from this inferior ganglion is going to leave your superior laryngeal nerve and it's going to enter with that superior laryngeal artery through that hole in that thyrohyoid membrane thyrohyoid membrane and it's going to go inside now this superior laryngeal nerve is going to supply there it's going to split there into two parts an internal laryngeal nerve and a bit which carries on going outside which is your external laryngeal nerve okay there he is going there and spreading himself over this muscle cricothyroid muscle that's that muscle on the outside now this is the one for the exams for those of you who who like your differences remember where there's a difference in anatomy normally means it's an exam question so there's a difference in anatomy equals exam question so listen up external laryngeal which is a branch of superior laryngeal nerve is motor to cricothyroid muscle all the other intrinsic muscles of the larynx are supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve this is the odd one out external laryngeal nerve from superior laryngeal which is a branch of the vagus nerve is the supply for this the one which is going inside through the hole which is internal laryngeal nerve is going to supply sensation to everything above the glottis sensation to everything above the glottis so the supraglottic area is going to be through this particular nerve now, let's talk about the vagus for a little bit. So the vagus gets its name because it's the wandering nerve. Now remember, those of you who, who, who've been in practicals, you'll remember the vagus nerve is always thinking about food. So he leaves the brain, he starts off going on his wander, and then he's thinking, oh grief, you know what, I'm so hungry, so hungry, got to get some food in here. So what does he do? He ducks into some food as soon as he possibly can. And what's his first point of entry for getting food? Into the pharynx. So some of the first branches of the vagus nerve are to the pharynx to supply the pharyngeal area. Um, and then it's going to come down. But for some reason, for some reason, the vagus nerve has a bit of a home alone moment. Now for those of you who've watched the movie Home Alone with Macaulay Culkin, you remember this classic scene. And if you just zoom back into the... Um, into the um, screen here you'll see that the vagus nerve starts to leave just like the home alone family left home for christmas and it starts to head down where should i go today oh i'll take a wander down into the thorax so it comes here here we're at the some jugular notch this is the manubrium here we're now heading into the thorax and on the left hand side he heads into the thorax off he goes off he goes off he goes and he gets to this stage and then all of a sudden Okay. 
instead of saying Kevin, he says, Larynx! Okay? Because he missed the larynx. He came down, he's all the way down in the thorax on the left hand side, and then he remembers the larynx. So, what does he do? If you look back here, he comes around the arch of the aorta, there's the arch of the aorta here, and then he sends a branch back towards the larynx. Turn around. Every time I think of the larynx, I just want to start singing. Turn around. And then that's the recurrent. Recurrent because it's turning around to return back up to the larynx. Because it's, they forgot Kevin. So they're turning around to go back up to supply the larynx. This is where your recurrent laryngeal comes from. Okay? And it runs up. If you look at it on the specimens, it normally runs up between the esophagus, which is behind the trachea, and the trachea, and it just runs in tight there, heading up towards the larynx. So that's on the left-hand side. So this is another exam one. On the left-hand side, the turnaround occurs around the arch of the aorta. On the right-hand side, so this is the right vagus nerve here, it comes round, and it comes down, and it's just about to get into the thorax, and then larynx, it remembers. And it turns around the right subclavian artery. That's it turning around there and beginning to head up in that same groove between the esophagus and the trachea back up to the larynx. So that's your nerve supply of the, of the larynx. The recurrent laryngeal is going to supply all those other muscles that I mentioned and also everything which is below the level of the glottis. Okay, Below level of the glottis, is all recurrent laryngeal for sensation. The motor muscles of the larynx are all recurrent laryngeal except for cricothyroid, which is supplied by the superior laryngeal nerve at the external branch of the superior laryngeal, and that is going to be motor to that muscle. And then the internal branch of the superior laryngeal is going to be sensation to everything above the level of the glottis. Very important for, for exam questions. So if we look back here, I'd like to just talk about my emergency procedures. So if you have a situation where you do your A, B, C, D, E's, when you're approaching somebody and you find that A, which is your airway, is blocked, airway is blocked, and there's no way of getting past an airway to maintain a patent airway, then this is one of the emergency procedures that's sometimes done. We can perform what's called a tracheotomy. That's a tracheotomy here, where we open up between rings two to four, tracheal rings two to four, and actually put in a tube here, allowing us to bypass this whole system here. So we bypass whatever's blocking up here to make sure this person get, gets air. Remember, no oxygen, um, no patent airway, you can die with literally seconds to minutes, seconds to minutes. So this is an emergency procedure that is done in those situations and that's where we place it and that's how it eventually looks and you can connect that up to a piped system to deliver oxygen. The other procedure which is really reserved for real emergencies and you often hear about this on aeroplanes with um, people using coat hangers to make this precision and also big biros back in the days when they had a, 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 um, a nice pointed sharp end to make a hole and basically that cricothyroid membrane here and remember it's got a midline thickening which is your crico, cricothyroid ligament we can pierce that with a sharp instrument and get a temporary hole, just a temporary hole. So you can, if there's a blockage up here, you can just get some temporary relief. And maybe it can give you up to about seven minutes or so if you can get that onto piped oxygen, just to allow the person to get oxygen while you work out what's going on upstairs to get a patent airway. And that's everything for our um, larynx videos. I hope you've enjoyed those.